This came from Enco, let's see, Enco Max in Lexington, Kentucky. I don't recognize that brand name. I assume that whatever product this is uh, was something that doesn't contain that name because it doesn't look familiar, but I'm not sure. I have a couple things I've been waiting on. It might be one of any of the above. And of course we have this huge box for this other smaller box inside. And this is, oh, okay. These are the CCK parkour version. Uh, I think these are Bluetooth, right? Yeah, Bluetooth headset. So this, I didn't know these were called parkour. I thought they were uh, water resistant or something, but maybe I'm, maybe that's a different one because I had a couple different, couple different headsets coming in this week. And let's open this right. All right, there you go. Nice packaging. Have instructions, user manual. It's usually one page of each language, but I'll go through this later and check it out. This looks interesting. Okay, so the charge port connector is under a panel here. MF button, next volume track, uh, earphone, ear tip. Let's go through and see what these look like. Nice little carrying case, pouch here. And someone outside banging on the garbage can. So sorry about the excess noise. Oh, these are interesting. Wow, that's kind of a trip. So you have your earpiece and then a big like barrel shaped deal here. And I'm not sure what that's about. So let's see, we have the adjustable cord here, of course, on the back. So you can get this to whatever length you need it to be, depending on the size of your head. And over here we have a pretty decent looking micro USB cable. It's actually more than a foot long. This thing is, wow. I'm gonna say this is a good three feet, maybe four. I'll measure it later on. And what do we have here? Some extra, or maybe some different sized uh, earbud cover deals. And according to the instructions, you have to open one of these in order to charge it. So which one? has the micro USB, there it is. Okay, so what I will do first off is plug this in and get it fully charged. Try them out, see what the range is like, how they sound, and then I'll read the instruction booklet and spare you uh, the downtime it's gonna take me to read that. So I can just come back and explain uh, anything I got from it. So there should be a light on here somewhere, I would imagine, to show that it's charging. There we go. So we have blue light, it's probably not that easy to see. There's a blue light here. So you can see it's charging. If I disconnect the charger or turn off the power, that light will go out. So there is your charge indicator. We'll see uh, once these get charged up, how long they last, what kind of range they have and so on. I've been using these for the last couple days and let me say one thing right off the bat. I challenge you to not watch the next 20 seconds of this video buy a pair of these and try to figure out how to put them on because I wouldn't have been able to figure out how these go on your head unless I looked at the picture. So um, again, spoiler alert, you have to get this thing so that it's, so this will be your left ear. This goes into your ear. This goes over the top of your ear and around the back of your head. And without looking at the picture, I never would have figured that out. So anyways, uh, maybe I'm just a little slow, but any, when you get these in on your, to where you're wearing them, you can actually tighten up this cord on the back. So they give you a pretty good fit. So uh, I don't do parkour, but if you do, maybe these would actually stay in your ears as you're jumping from one building to the next. I can't tell you for sure because that's not what I do, but I can tell you a couple of other things. Uh, first of all, it is easy to control the uh, most of the functionality. So this little button right on the top of this barrel here, this will turn them off, turn them on. It will pause and play your music. It will also allow you to voice dial on your call. It will activate Siri. Uh, what else does it do? It does all sorts of different stuff. So this is the MF button, they call it. I'm not sure what MF stands for uh, when it comes to this headset. I know what it used to stand for, but I don't think that's what this is supposed to be. Now we have the volume controls. I like this because when you press down, the volume goes down. When you press up, the volume goes up. This will be in your right ear. So that's easy to remember, understand, and control. 
when it comes to track selection, these are kind of the opposite of what we normally see. So usually, if you want to track select, you just quickly press on a button because it will function as volume if you long press it. But on this headset, if you want to skip a track or go backwards on a track, you have to hold it down. So if I just do a quick press on here, it's going to raise the volume one, one notch, click it again, it'll raise it another notch. But if I hold this down for a couple seconds, it will advance to, then, to the next track. But if I continue holding it, it will continue to cycle through the tracks in succession. And then of course, if I press this one here on the bottom, it will rewind one track at a time. So that took some getting used to. Again, that's kind of the opposite as far as uh, how most headsets are controlled. Now, what I like here is you can see that they've reinforced where the cord goes in. There's a little plastic piece there, and that I think over time will prolong the life of these cords. That's one problem that we have with cords when they're not reinforced down there, you know, they wiggle around and then the wire on the inside gets broken. So for durability purposes, that will be great. Now, I was mistaken when I opened the box. For some reason, I was thinking that these were water resistant. They are not. So don't take them out in the rain. Of course, uh, what are you going to be doing parkouring out in the rain? I don't know. Is that a thing? Maybe. So here's something kind of funny about this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this earpiece and put it by the microphone so you can hear. There are four different languages installed into this. And I don't know how to describe the voice, but just listen for yourself to the way the woman who recorded this talks. It's kind of uh, entertaining. So first of all, I'm going to long press it and turn it on. Power on. I don't think that's an accent. I wouldn't call it an accent, but it's a very interesting way of speaking. So I'm going to hold it again and power it off, and then I'll put it into pairing mode. You can see when you power it on, the little blue light will be flashing. And this one, uh, again, kind of counterintuitive. When you want to put it in pairing mode, the blue light's actually going to go solid. So I'm going to go ahead and power this down again, and you can hear what she's saying. Power off. Okay, and this time I'm going to continue to hold this until it goes into pairing mode. Power on. Ready to pair. So this blue light will stay on until you have paired to whatever device you're going to be using with this. It's very easy to set up. It comes up uh, with a display that says uh, KS Parkour, which is kind of cool. It doesn't have some random information for the device name. Uh, and this should go out of pairing mode in just a second, but I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and uh, see if I can take it out of pairing mode. And I actually can't hear what she's saying at the moment. So um, unfortunately, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'll just go ahead and turn this off. And then the other thing I wanted to attempt to demonstrate, and this is going to be awkward because I really need two hands to do it, but it has language support in multiple languages. So let's go ahead and turn it back on again. Power on. Okay, and what you've got to do is press this bottom button down here, so the volume down and the MF button at the same time, and you can cycle through the languages. Okay, I don't even know what language I'm on at this point because I can't hear the monitor, but uh, you get the idea. So four different languages here supported, and I was actually just looking at them in the instruction booklet a moment ago. So we've got, it says in the instruction book booklet, Chinese, English, French, and Spanish. Now, I may be mistaken, but I didn't think that Chinese was a language. I thought it would either be Cantonese or Mandarin. Uh, apparently now the thing is to call it Chinese, so I'm not sure 100% what language that refers to, but apparently it is one of the languages that is spoken in China. Now, in the booklet, it says 33 feet for operating range free space, and I, I assume... You know, you would think that that means line of sight, but I was easily able to get 50 feet line of sight before I had any problems with the Bluetooth connection. So they've actually underestimated the performance, in my opinion, or at least in my experience. So that's kind of a good thing. Now, when it comes to the sound itself, I will say that these are not going to give you a lot of low end sound. So they do scream. The volume is sufficient. I mean, these things will get louder than you ever need them to, but they're not going to have that rich, deep bass that you might be used to if you're using something like over the ear headphones. The other thing that I ran into is that inside of the 
booklet, it says that when there comes a call, the earphones will automatically broadcast the phone number. And I had someone call me while I was using these and it did not play the phone number back in my ear. I heard my phone ringing and that's all. So I'm actually waiting on a response from the person who supplied these to see if maybe there's a way that, uh, you know, a step that I need to take in order to activate that function. But for the time being, you can assume at the very least that your phone will ring in your ear when you have an incoming call. And really, does anyone care? Because I don't know about you, but I couldn't tell you probably what two people I know, uh, you know, what their phone number would be. That's not something I keep track of anymore, which is kind of sad because if I lose my phone, I can't figure out how to get a hold of anybody. But uh, that's kind of the world that we live in. Now, the area where these are charged, which is right up here at the top of this one, um, I'm really wondering how long this little flap is going to last. There's a rubber piece that goes down into a hole. And with the little use and abuse, I think that might pop off or pop out or break, you know, kind of like the uh, charge port cover on the Galaxy S5. And when that happens, I don't know what you would replace that with. Now, I realize it's only a dust cover, but I would assume that if you lose this, you're probably not going to be able to get a replacement. I don't know. They may have one on their website. I'll have to look into that later. So overall, these are pretty cool for the price. I think the main idea here is that they stay in your ears while you're moving around and I didn't have any problem. I did some running with these on and they felt like they were pretty secure and they would stay in place. So, uh, and that's one area that I couldn't really use my over the ear headphones. These will do the trick. If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews. And most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section and thanks for watching.